Hello, I'm Paul Dajic, founder of Elastic Steel, method of athletic conditioning. Today I'm going to talk to you about the back kick. I got a lot of questions about the back kick and I want to talk about it. We're going to do less kinesiology and more biomechanics today. Okay? Now, back kick is just like any other kick, just like any other punch. There's two things that make it stronger. There's nothing mystical about it. A lot of times people look at the spin and they say it's all in the spin, it's how you do the spin, that's where everything comes from. That is not where everything comes from. Okay? So I'm going to demonstrate right now a simple rear hand palm strike. Okay? That's a palm strike. Nothing more. Now, there must be two components. One component is the movement or the transfer of your weight. You got to transfer your weight into your opponent. Okay? The more weight you have, if you transfer it at the same speed or the same acceleration, more power. You have the same amount of weight, you transfer it faster, more power. However, if you don't concentrate, okay, that transfer, there's no power, almost no power. Okay? What I mean is this. Let's take two different points of view. First one if we do the rotation and no weight transfer. Okay? My weight is even on both legs. I'm not transferring my weight forward. Okay? I'm not transferring it. What I'm doing is rotating. So, you can try to do a palm strike or rear hand punch. Okay? This way. Have somebody have a target about here and try to hit it without any weight transfer. Just the rotation. Okay? It doesn't matter how much you can snap the hips and move you're not going to get a lot of power, okay? You're not going to get a lot of power. You're going to get more power if somebody comes into you at the same time, but it's still going to be very limited because you're not transferring your weight. Now, you can take the opposite point of view and you can transfer the weight and not concentrate, okay? So we're not going to do any rotation, we're just going to transfer the weight forward, okay? So we're not going to transfer the weight forward with the rotation, we're just going to go straight forward, okay? So you would do this, okay? You're transferring the weight, but you're not concentrating it, okay? You're not exploding it and placing it in a specific concentration area through your arm or through your leg, okay? So if you don't do that, you're not going to have any power. What the spin does, it allows you to transfer the weight in a very specific way, okay? That's what a spin does in a spin back it. Now, I'm telling you right now, I'm not going to talk about the actual kick. There's YouTube videos and I have DVDs about different kicks and biomechanics and kinesiology of those kicks. That's not what I'm going to talk about. I'm going to talk about how to create power from that spin, from that whole thing that we call the spinning kick, okay? Now, there's a number of ways that people do it. Sometimes you go high, sometimes you go low. Sometimes you go wide, sometimes you go narrow. Sometimes the target is a little bit closer to you, sometimes a little bit further. Okay? So, if a target usually is further, and I do not intend to go high, I need to go low, I need to make it short and quick, I'm going to transfer my hips from here I'm doing the right leg, so I'm going to transfer my hips into it, okay? Why? Because I want my weight to already lean in, so when the kick comes, my weight sort of follows, okay? Am I pushing off this leg? I'm always going to be pushing off this leg. But not too much, because my main point is to start shifting my weight. Now, this happens very fast, and I'm going to break down a kick. I'm going to show you a kick, and I'm going to break it down step by step, very slowly, slow motion, you can see how that's happening. Okay? That's one option. The weight sort of comes in, and a lot of people do that. They sort of go, boom. Okay? Now, the other option is to actually stay with a straight leg. For different situations, people use different things. Stay with a straight leg, and push off, okay? So, in very slow motion, you're going to notice quick push off. Doesn't look like the leg extended, but it does, okay? 
to get complete push off. And then you go into the target. Okay, I'm going to demonstrate that to the other direction. <clears throat> so, here I can either shift my weight in and go boom, or I can stay a little bit higher and push off. And somebody who intends to go a little bit further or intends to go a little bit higher, like maybe half of that will take that variation. Okay? Now, what you're going to see a lot of people do, especially when people do it for distance, for height, in demonstrations, if somebody's hitting a pad where it's not real fighting or it's not like you're breaking a board where you have to concentrate, you'll see people actually extend this leg even a little bit longer. Okay, what that does, it allows your body to go in more without falling down. Okay, because this leg sort of counterbalances for split second. If you want to understand what that means, if you walk down the street and you have heavy bag in one hand, okay, but you're going to notice as you're walking, the arm is going to be here. Okay, it's sort of a counterbalance. That's what this leg does. You can't lean in too much, but if you sort of do this, and everything on this side, you can lean in more. If it's not here, you're going to fall. So it counterbalances. Okay, that little, like, few inches makes a big difference of how much weight you transfer. Okay? So, those are the two points. Number one, transfer the weight into the kick. Number two, concentrate. So that's what spin back kick does. Just like any other kick, any other punch. Okay, you transfer the weight, you concentrate it. There's always a little spin. Pretty much any kick, any punch has a spin. Even a front leg roundhouse will have a little bit of a hip sort of movement into it. Okay, even a front leg roundhouse, you might think that it's just that, just the leg kicking, but there will be a little bit of whip action there to concentrate that weight going forward. Okay, now I'm going to show you just one exercise to improve your spin back kick. Okay, just one exercise. This exercise focus on the pushing leg. Okay? How do you get your weight into the target? Okay, how do you do that? Well you get that weight with this leg. Okay? It doesn't matter if you bring the weight in this way or you push up higher, you still need this leg to do the kick. Okay? This leg right here, this leg, the real leg, pushes your body into the target. Okay? pushes your weight, okay? So, resistant band, placing it around your hip area, right here, okay? Your hip area, you can attach it to something, or you can have somebody hold it, okay? You have somebody hold it. You can do this with something that is not stretchable, but I prefer something that is stretchable, because if it's not stretchable, you're going to have to have somebody actually sort of do that manually. So you have this thing here. Okay. You're going to kick in this direction. It must be attached in the opposite direction. Okay. So it goes here and attached in the opposite direction. And what I want you to do is practice that push off. Okay. Okay. Push off. You're pushing off. Some people will push off more this way. Some people will push off more this way. Not everybody spins at exactly the same time. Okay? Now that has to do with how far is the target, your weight distribution, your height distribution, how high you want to kick. Okay? It has to do with those things. But this is a drill. Resistant band here, and you sort of hit and you push. Small range of motion. Okay? Small range of motion. That's what you're going to practice. I'm going to take a video now and I'm going to break it down piece by piece and you're going to see what's going on. I want to thank in advance Mika from Quan Kicker for giving me this video to analyze and he has great kicks. You can see it at Quan Kicker uh, account on YouTube. The first thing that you can see the rear put it out. This allows the body to move forward sideways 
and from here the body begins to move forward with the hips leading okay now the body moved forward a little bit the rear leg is not straight now the rear leg extends the hips stall for a little bit and the upper body turns okay once the upper body turns the hips follow now the upper body is gonna stall for a little bit and the hips are gonna go through notice the supporting foot took off and landed forward of the place where it took off and that's how the weight transfer takes place in this kick. With shorter, lower kick, the biomechanics are going to be slightly different.